Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're jumping right into one of the biggest, most urgent conversations happening in IT departments, well, everywhere really. We're talking about making that leap from the industry giant, VMware, over to the open source challenger, Proxmox. So what does that actually mean for you, for your team, and for your entire tech stack? Let's get into it. Okay, you know this scene. Picture it. You're all in the conference room, the budget slide is up, and the CFO's eyes just zero in on that one massive line item, VMware renewals, right? You can feel the air get thick, someone nervously shifts in their chair, and then it comes. That one question that changes absolutely everything. Is there a cheaper way to do this? Suddenly, you're looking at alternatives that, let's be honest, might have seemed completely off the table until now. And let me tell you, that question is being asked a lot more lately especially since Broadcom's acquisition of VMware sent those renewal prices through the roof. And this whole situation has basically thrown a huge spotlight onto open source alternatives. The one name you keep hearing over and over, Proxmox. So the battle lines are drawn, right? It's the deeply entrenched, super polished, and now very expensive industry standard versus the free, flexible, up and coming challenger. All right, so let's really break this down. On one side, you've got VMware, I mean, for years, it's been the king of the hill, the default choice for just about everyone. It's powerful, it's reliable, it has this massive ecosystem, it's the definition of enterprise grade. But then, on the other side, you have Proxmox. Now, this is built on seriously proven open source tech. We're talking KVM and Linux, and it offers just incredible power without those eye-watering licensing fees. And really, it's not just about the money. It's a whole different philosophy about how you run your infrastructure. Okay. So let's be brutally honest here, no sugarcoating. Let's start with what you actually lose. Because if you're seriously thinking about moving from VMware, there are some big ticket features that just don't have a simple one-to-one -one replacement in the Proxmox world. This is where the real hard choices begin. First on the chopping block, VMware's Distributed Resource Scheduler, or DRS. Look, this thing is basically magic. It's like a super smart traffic cop for your servers, automatically shuffling your VMs around to balance the load, and you don't have to lift a finger. It's always on, always optimizing. Now Proxmox, it has something called CRS, but it's a different beast entirely. It's more policy-driven. It kicks in during specific events, like failovers or maintenance. It is not constantly fine-tuning things in the background, and for teams that rely on that set-it-and-forget-it optimization, yeah, this is going to feel like a pretty big downgrade. And this next one, this might be the toughest pill to swallow. We're talking about fault tolerance, or FT. VMware's FT creates a perfect, live, running mirror of a virtual machine on a totally separate server. So if the main one goes down, poof, the backup takes over instantly. We're talking zero downtime, zero data loss. Proxmox, well, it just doesn't have a direct equivalent to this. The whole philosophy shifts. Instead of making the infrastructure unbreakable, the responsibility moves up the stack to making the application itself fault tolerant. And that, my friends, is a major, major architectural shift. Then there's Site Recovery Manager, SRM. For a lot of enterprise folks, this is the holy grail. Think of it as disaster recovery in a box, a super polished automated tool for managing failover between your entire data centers. In the Proxmox world, look, you can absolutely build a bulletproof DR plan, but you're gonna have to roll up your sleeves. You'll be scripting it yourself or piecing together third-party tools. There's just no clean out of the box button to push. And for a lot of big companies, that's gonna feel like the single biggest missing piece of the puzzle. But okay, enough of the doom and gloom. It's not all about losing stuff. Let's pivot and talk about the good enough zone. This is that gray area where features aren't really lost. They're just different. And you know what? In this zone, different can sometimes be a whole lot better, depending on what your team really needs. Let's talk storage for a second. VMware's VMFS, rock solid, deeply integrated, no question. But Proxmox, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet of storage options. You want Ceph? You got it. ZFS? No problem. ISSCI? Of course. It gives you this incredible flexibility. And then there's backups. Yeah, VMware has a huge ecosystem with amazing tools like Veeam, but Proxmox has a serious ace up its sleeve here, its very own Proxmox Backup Server, or PBS. And this thing is not only deeply integrated, it's seriously, seriously powerful. And that brings us to the really good news. Let's talk about what you actually keep, and maybe even what you gain. Because when it comes to the day-to-day -day grind, the stuff your team does all the time, the transition might be a whole lot smoother than you're expecting. In fact, you might just walk away with a few new tricks to brag about. So look at this list. All the core day-to-day -day stuff, 
It's all here. High availability to get a VM back online in minutes if a host dies? Check. Live migration. Yep, that's their vMotion equivalent for moving running machines without any downtime. You got it. And of course, all the essentials are built right in. Snapshots, clones, role-based access control, templates for spinning up new servers fast. Your DevOps folks are going to love the robust API for all their automation needs. Oh, and speaking of those powerful integrated tools, remember that Proxmox backup server I was just talking about? Well, it has one feature that is going to make even the most diehard VMware admins jaw drop. Get ready for this. We are talking about restoring a 230 gigabyte virtual machine in three minutes. No, that is not a typo. Three minutes. How? It has this incredible live restore feature, which means the VM comes online almost instantly while all the data copies over in the background. This is a perfect example of where Proxmox isn't just good enough. It's flat out exceptional. So as you can probably tell, we've moved way beyond a simple feature for feature checklist. The choice between VMware and Proxmox, it's not just a technical one, it's strategic. It's, well, it's a philosophical decision about the kind of IT department you wanna be and how you want to operate. And that brings us to the million dollar question, right? Should you actually make the jump? Look, the hard truth is that the features you supposedly lose only really matter if you are actually using them in the first place. The right answer here, it depends entirely on your company's specific needs, your tolerance for risk, and frankly, the skills you have on your team. Okay, let's boil this entire thing down to its essence. If you're in a world where things like zero downtime fault tolerance, polished push-button disaster recovery, and seamless management across multiple clusters are absolute 100% non-negotiables, then yeah, VMware probably still has the edge, even with that hefty price tag. But if your main drivers are massive cost savings, having the flexibility to do what you want, and really taking control of your own stack with open source tools, then Proxmox isn't just an option, it's the clear winner. But here's the ultimate takeaway from all of this. If you remember one thing, make it this. One thing is for sure, the days of just blindly signing those massive VMware renewal checks are over, they're done. The conversation has completely and fundamentally shifted. Proxmox isn't some fringe experiment anymore. It's a real legitimate contender that is forcing everyone to stop and reevaluate what they truly need from their infrastructure. And that, right there, changes the entire game.